Hello once again everybody, this is Gary Jackson for In Ohio Country Today. We're visiting with Dean Armstrong. Dean, we have here uh, an exhibit that you've uh, taken around with you from place to place to place over the years and uh, dealing with livestock. For the, the person that's not familiar with uh, livestock equipment, can you tell us what you have here? Well, we, uh, we traditionally sell uh, livestock feeding and handling equipment. Uh, of course, feeding and care of livestock, and we got two purposes there, and, and uh, one main is to keep us safe and economical, and to keep the animals safe. So, um, I've made this statement on the handling equipment many times that one trip to the hospital will pay for all of it. So, we throw the cost out there, but we uh, we've been at it for a few years and uh, enjoy the industry, enjoy the people we work with. You mentioned the fact keeping uh, not only the human uh, involved with the equipment safe, but the animals safe, and that's, I guess, everybody, uh, including the people on the farm and uh, people that are sitting uh, home in the city and their their home are concerned about animal care these days, and, and that's uh, one of the things that you can uh, readily see. When an animal isn't moving around, there's less chance for him to, to get hurt. Right, and... Uh I mean, all animals have what we call a flight zone, and uh, if we take advantage of the flight zone instead of working against the flight zone, we're, we're a lot better off. There's been a lot of studies, there's been uh, a lot of things in the news in the forefront that uh, sometimes puts a bad light on the farmer and the way he handles animals, but uh, you know, there's, uh, there's one-tenth of one percent that gives us all a bad name. It's a lot like the lawyers, you know, that there's a there's a 98 percent of them that's ruining the reputation of all the lawyers so uh, <laughs> the farmers kind of the opposite of that but um, and we don't like to hear those stories but we also uh, don't like to see that happen and uh, and it is a, a lot of times more than just an economic decision when you're making a, a purchase of uh, handling equipment especially now a lot of folks out there wouldn't realize that not only does this gentleman here sell this livestock equipment, but he's a cowboy poet extraordinaire. And Dean, I don't think I'm ever with you that I ask you to give us uh, something that you've written that uh, might educate all of us just a little bit more. Do you have something in your repertoire that you could tell us right now? Well, we'll try one. I'll put it that way. I'm rusty. We haven't done many shows this winter, so uh, just pulling it off the top of my head. But uh, there's times in life that uh, we may confront someone that uh, we're not real pleased with or is not real pleased with us. So uh, I have a way of handling uh, my personal anger. But I'll admit you've made me angry. Really, I was pretty sore. I decided I'd learn to hate you and not speak to you no more. It'd go against all my morals. It's not the way that I was taught. I go to church on Mother's Day and Easter. Well, to you, that's quite a lot. I had a dream, a vision, while I was sleeping in my bed, and I can't shake this hellish nightmare that's thrashing in my head. I was looking down on you from a mountaintop, all filled with hate and pride. When I looked around, and there I found Satan by my side. He cheered me on, said I was right. He blew a lot of wind. He conned me with his sweet talk, and he even called me friend. He was making a lot of sense to me. He said, you had done me wrong. <clears throat> then uh, he asked me, this one question, and I just couldn't go along. Get thee behind me, Satan. That was my reply, but he squared off for battle. He said, you'll tell me or you'll die. Well, I wrestled with that demon. I put up a fierce fight, and I'll tell you, Jacob himself would have been ashamed had he been there that night. But Morgan showed that I was beat. I was covered with blood and gore, and I could never hold my head as high as I did before. So I'll make peace with you, my buddy. You I do forgive, but I answered the devil's question. 
I told him where you live. Dean Armstrong, cowboy poet extraordinaire. And Dean, if folks would like to get a little information about your livestock, what's the best way for them to go about doing that? Uh, the best way is to see me at a trade show. Uh, we'll be at the uh, Beef Expo in March. We'll also do the Farm Science Review every year. Um, I pass out a lot of cards. I have a home phone number of 740-988-5681. I carry a cell phone of 740-357-3367. We have an email address, armstrong.agra at yahoo.com. Um, those three ways are good. The cell phone's the best. The home is next to best. Leave a message at either one of them. The email, I guarantee I check it every month. So I'm a little bit of a procrastinator when it comes to the to sitting down in front of the computer. But um, but those are the best ways to get a hold of us. Or uh, probably talk to your neighbor. He probably has got his card in my bill or my card in his billfold. So that's what we try to do. Dean Armstrong, our guest, and I'm Gary Jackson for In Ohio Country today.